I'm, I sit down. I don't say anything. I know how to follow orders. Rickover's sitting there and he goes, why do you want to be in my program? Well, I'll tell you. I said, well, Admiral, you know, I think the nuclear Navy's, you know, the best, you know, branch of the Navy and it's a good career and it's really the only thing I want to do. Of course, the whole time I'm saying to myself, it's more money, I get submarine pay, nuke pay, better career promotion opportunities, right? That's what I'm thinking. So Admiral Rickover kind of tilts up and he goes, I hate people like you. And I'm like, uh-oh. Now let me tell you, I grew up in the 60s in the United States. And there was this television show on at the time called Lost in Space. And there was this kid, Will Robinson, who had this robot that was kind of like a 1960s version of R2-D2, except it was big. And it was this guy with a big round helmet, you know? But any time Will Robinson was in danger, the robot would go, danger, danger, <laughs> Will Robinson, right? So when Rickover said, I hate people like you, all of a sudden I had this flash. The robot was going, danger, danger, <laughs> right? So he starts to tell me, you're not good enough to be in my program. I hate people like you, you do this and that. And I'm not even listening anymore. I've been spending years working hard in a military program and this is all I want to do and this guy's going to take it away from me. Well, I'm not going to let that happen. All that processing goes on in a nanosecond and when Rick over says I hate people like you and he starts talking about a half a second later I said excuse me Admiral you're wrong sir and he stood up or sat up and he said what did you say and I said you're wrong Admiral I'll be in your program and I'll be one of the best damn submarine officers you ever had. Well let me tell you something that didn't go over too well. <laughs> he stood up and he reamed me up one side and down the other and he slammed his fist on the table. And all of a sudden this old shriveled 81 year old guy, he looked pretty powerful. And he said, get the hell out of my office. So I got up, I walk out. I'm thinking to myself, maybe that wasn't such a good move. I get outside the door and that four-striper captain who's behind me slaps me on the back and says, congratulations, son, you're in. <laughs> what was that? What happened? I just told the Admiral he's wrong and I'm in? Let me tell you something, Admiral Rickover was a genius. Because when you're a thousand feet underwater and the reactor shuts down and you've got one or two incoming torpedoes and a billion dollar ship and 120 souls that you're responsible for, who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters? <laughs> Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray are too old. What are you going to call your mom? She doesn't know anything about reactor kinetics or physics. She might say, I love you and good luck, but she can't help you. I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're not going to call anybody. You're going to make the decision, and you're going to have the courage, and you're going to solve that problem yourself because necessity is the mother of all invention. Necessity is what creates new products, new inventions, great ideas, new mergers, and on and on and on. And good leaders who are great leaders know how to make necessity their friend. They know how to use necessity to make things happen. And Rickover was a genius. There I was sitting in a chair in an office and he put me a thousand feet underwater and put me in necessity. Now that was courage. Courage, as opposed to confidence, is an act of doing, not thinking. It is necessitated by a fear and acted upon by a desire. And that desire is for something you care about. And when the energy builds up on something you care, it overcomes that fear and boom, courage comes into action. That's what it is.